Hello, my name is Jim Lawrence. I'm a senior design engineer at Acromag, and I'll be giving an introduction to the CAN bus. CAN is an acronym that stands for Controller Area Network. It is a form of multiplex wiring designed by Bosch Corporation that allows the linking of a number of control systems together, normally in a vehicle, so they can share information. CAN has been used in automobiles for over 20 years. The first CAN controller chips were produced by Intel and Philips, and they came on the market in 1987. CAN is a very reliable data transmission that satisfies the real-time requirements of many applications. CAN is a multi-drop, multi-master serial bus that provides communications between controllers, sensors, and actuators. It is very reliable technology that has been well proven. It's been around since the mid-1980s. Um, CAN bus is available on many low-cost microprocessors, and uh, as a result of that, uh, very inexpensive to use in, uh, in designs of sensors and actuators. There are two versions of CAN that are in use, uh, CAN 2.0A and CAN 2.0B. Now the difference between the two standards is uh, the, the B has an extended identifier. Uh, they use a um, 29-bit identifier instead of 11, so it uh, allows for uh, more types of messages to be identified. Um, there are two international standards ISO 11898-2 is the high-speed CAN at 1 megabits per second, and then there's ISO 11898-3, which is a low-speed CAN applications at 125 kilobits per second. Now, CAN is uh, well known in the automotive application area but it has also seen extensive use in other areas as well, such as military vehicles, industrial machinery, medical systems, agricultural machinery, marine control and navigation, and elevator control systems are some examples of other CAN application areas. This slide shows the, uh, a model of a network layered uh, representation of CAN or any network application. And uh, CAN defines the lower two levels, the data link layer and the physical layer. There are higher layer protocols that uh, are built on, on top of CAN, and some of these are DeviceNet, CAN Open, CAN Aerospace, MILCAN, SAE, J1939 is the automotive standard, and there's also ISO 1192, which is uh, used for heavy trucks and uh, to communicate between the truck and the trailer. So the characteristics of CAN are that um, all messages are broadcast messages and any node on the bus can broadcast a message at any time it wants to. Each message contains an identifier that uh, identifies the source or the content of a message and each receiver on the bus uh, listens to or receives every message that's sent and depending on the identifier or the content of the message, it decides on whether that information is useful and it can choose to process that information or ignore it. The maximum length of a CAN bus is dependent on the bit rate that is being used on that bus. Uh, one megabit per second bus would be able to have a maximum length up to 40 meters and uh, a slower implementation of CAN, such as the 125k bit per second uh, baud rate, would be would be able to go up to 500 meters. Now, the physical medium used by CAN is a single twisted pair of wire, and it's terminated on each end with a 120 ohm uh, termination network. This slide shows uh, two nodes connected to the twisted pair. This slide shows uh, a display of uh, what you would see on an oscilloscope if you were looking at the CAN high and CAN low signals on the CAN bus. The um, two logic states of the bus, uh, 
commonly known as well, like logic high or low or one or zero, are termed uh, dominant and recessive by the CAN bus specification. The dominant is a, a logic low, and when the bus is in the dominant state, both CAN high and CAN low are driven. Uh, CAN high is driven to three and a half volts, and CAN low is pulled down to one and a half. And when we're in the recessive state, neither one of the CAN high or CAN low is driven, and the bus floats to its midpoint level of about two and a half volts. Now this, uh, by using these two, uh, the dominant and recessive state, um, if two nodes were transmitting simultaneously, and one node attempted to put the recessive state out on the bus, while the other one uh, put the dominant state out, of course the dominant state would be visible to all nodes, and the recessive state would be overwritten by the dominant. And that is the mechanism that is used in the CAN bus to arbitrate between uh, two transmitters trying to access the bus at the same time. The transmitter that's transmitting the dominant state would win the arbitration, and the, uh, the transmitter that was attempting to transmit the recessive state would be the loser of the arbitration, and it would have to uh, back off its transmitting and, and wait for another available time to transmit. Each CAN node has its own local oscillator. There's no uh, timing information. Well, there's no clock information embedded in the CAN signal. So at the beginning of each bit time that has a uh, recessive to dominant transition, all receivers on the CAN bus must synchronize to the transmitter when this edge occurs. Now each of the local oscillators is running at some multiple of the bit rate, and it has a counters, they have counters internal to them that will determine the optimum time to sample the CAN bus uh, signal level during the bit period, and that is uh, adjusted by, or I should say tuned by the system engineer uh, to optimize the timing of the CAN receivers. The CAN specification doesn't spe they do not specify a maximum number of nodes uh, that are allowed on a CAN bus. Uh, the networks are really limited by the electrical loading of the uh, res of all the nodes and the, uh, the basically the drive strength of the, the weakest transmitters. But uh, typically, uh, 64 nodes is normal on a CAN bus, up to 64. There are four message types defined in the CAN bus. Uh, the data frame, remote frame, error frame, and overload frame. Uh, almost all the information is sent using the data frame. And that is when a transmitter broadcasts a message, that is the message type that it will use. Uh, infrequently used is the remote frame, and that is a message sent by a transmitter requesting another device to transmit data that is not frequently used. The other two is the error frame, and that is sent by the receiver. Uh, well, a note, any note that detects an error in a message can send an error frame. And there's also the overload frame, and that is uh, information that is sent by the receiver that, that to notify a sender that it is not ready to receive additional data. This slide shows the components of a message in standard format. Um, it starts out, all messages start with a start of frame bit, and uh, they are then followed by the identifier bit. In this case, in the standard message, that's 11 bits for the identifier. If it were an extended format message, then the identifier length would be 29 bits instead of 11. Um, <coughs> Following the identifier is a, a single bit that uh, is used to distinguish this message from the remote transmission message. The next bit is the uh, ID extension, which would distinguish the standard format message from the extended format message. We have one reserved bit, and the next four bits uh, will tell the uh, will identify the length of the message. The, uh, there can be zero to eight data bytes in the message. 
And following the data is a cyclic redundancy check. For, there's 15 bits of CRC, followed by one CRC delimiter. And then there's a bit period for the uh, receivers of a message to acknowledge they've received the message. And there's one bit time for a delimiter, and then seven bit times to identify the end of the frame. There are five different error detection capabilities designed into CAN. Um, the two, first two are error detection that are that is done by the transmitter of a message, and the last three are errors that are detected by the receiver of a message. Now the first, the bit error, uh, is detected by transmitter when it uh, is attempting to output a dominant or a recessive state on the bus, and it detects something opposite of what is expecting. So it can detect a bit error that is done by the transmitter. And the transmitter also will expect an acknowledge from each receiver, or from at least one receiver, each time it sends a message. And if it does not detect an acknowledge for a transmission that it sends, then that would be an acknowledge error. That means that one of the either none of the transceivers received the message, or none of them received it without error. Okay, the third, uh, the, the last three errors are detected by a receiver on the CAN bus. Uh, the first error is a form error, and that would be uh, a receiver that detects that uh, a delimiter is not in its correct position. Would be an example of a form error. Uh, the transmitter of a message will calculate a, CR, a checksum for the, for the whole message and transmit that checksum at the end of the data section of the message. A receiver will also calculate a checksum as it receives the data, and it will compare its calculated checksum with the checksum that's sent by the transmitter. Um, and if they are not the same, then they will detect that uh, error has occurred in the transmission. There's also a stuff error that can be detected by a receiver. The, uh, in, the, in the CAN bus specification, it, no more than five consecutive bits of the same value can be sent. And if a receiver detects a six bit, uh, that's the same logical value, then that would be a stuff error. Uh, the, since the um, Receivers have to resynchronize occasionally. And they can't tolerate uh, a longer period than five bit times be going between synchronizations. Thank you for viewing this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you would like more information on Acromag, please go to our website at www.acromag.com.